Eo will start recording. We'll say, got it. Um, so for uh, for your information, for the information that uh, folks calling in on, on Zoom, we will be recording and posting this session on the City of Alpine website for this year and future years. So anytime somebody wants to know uh, some details about how the hotel occupancy tax works, uh, they'll have that resource. So uh, this is a workshop on the legal uses of the hotel occupancy tax. I'll also give some information about uh, the city of Alpine's hotel occupancy tax grant program, which we are open for applications right now. I'll put a couple slides, uh, slides up really quick. And, uh, and we'll get that out of the way. Uh, this is where you can find information, including the guidelines and applications for the grants at cityofalpine.com. And in the top menu, the far right-hand side, you go to how do I, go down to apply for, and then select hotel occupancy tax funds. And that will take you to the page with a link to the document, which is the guidelines and the application in one PDF file. It also has a sample budget and there are other resource links, including a promotions, event promotions workshop we did earlier this year. Let me see, the next slide. Uh, one key thing that is sometimes difficult to wrap your head around is right now in summer of 22, we are taking grants for the next fiscal year. So if you're planning something early fall, well, you're too late because uh, every expenditure under these grants, the event doesn't necessarily have, have to be in the fiscal year, but all the expenditures do. And that's from October 1, 2022 through September 30th, 2023. And the reason is because the city of Alpine is a government that's responsible to all of you for every expenditure. There's an audit every year. And uh, we want to make absolutely sure that our audit is clean. So every the fiscal year has stone walls around it. Nothing can pass through the barrier. So, uh, so when you're planning for what you might apply for, that is your time window. And lastly, this year, our applications are due July 1st. We're taking them now through July 1st. Uh, and they will go to Gio Calderon, our city secretary, and here's his email address. Or you can bring them on paper to City Hall, but hey, email is great because that's how we'll distribute it to the committee that will review the applications. Uh, but I wanted to get those up on everybody's screen so it's at the video at the start. And then I'll get rid of that screen share. Hey, Chris. Yes. Somebody on Zoom is saying it's real hard to understand you, to hear and understand you. Okay. Now this person on Zoom, is this better? Is it a chat that you're seeing that I'm not? I think it's a text. She's a text. Is that the microwave? microwave? Well, there's several different microphones. Questions, which one's connected to Zoom? Yeah, well, they should all be in the same place. We'll I can hear you loud and, and clear, Chris. Okay, well, that's good. Thank you, Todd. I'm here. So uh, yeah, Justin, if you want to hover around okay. this mic. So I will then introduce uh, Justin Bragel, the lead counsel for the Texas Hotel and Lodging Association. Uh, we are members, the city of Alpine is a member of the Hotel Lodging Association, and therefore all of Alpine's hotels and registered short-term uh, rentals are also members of the Texas Hotel Lodging Association. Justin has, has digested every word and punctuation mark in the statute that the legislature passes to, to run this law. And so uh, he's going to give us a quick overview, or as quick as uh, is reasonable, uh, of how the law works and the kinds of expenses that are legal under the hotel occupancy tax. Uh, and let's see, and we absolutely want your questions. So uh, I think it's fine to just pop up and, and say, excuse me, Justin, at any point, uh, because the more different questions we get, the more are answered for the people on the video later. So, Justin, please. Right, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Um, and on, on that note too, um, when somebody asks a question, I'll do my best to repeat it for the folks that are on Zoom. So if I fail to do that, just 
remind me so that, that happens. Uh, it's good to be here. It's good to be back in Alpine. Good to be back in Alpine in person. Um, I'm Justin Bregel. I'm general counsel at Texas Hotel and Lodging Association. Uh, we travel the state of Texas um, talking about hotel taxes, advising lodging operators um, on the laws that govern their general operations. We have three attorneys on staff. We're happy to take your calls or questions anytime, email, phone, text message, whatever. Uh, we'll feel free to get in touch with us and answer any questions, watch any questions you may have. Um, it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's good to be back. Unfortunately, I think um, the laws that govern hotel occupancy tax use can get somewhat, I won't say complicated, but, but maybe folks um, get a little confused at times about how those laws work. And I think that that's just a, a nature of the fact that these laws have been added to gradually over time since the 1960s. And so, and, and the legislature has never really taken on like a wholesale cleanup of the, of the tax code. And so as a result, it's a bit of a mess, but um, we'll talk about the important laws in chapter 351 of the tax code that, that are be relevant for you all as applicants, or if you're a city official, relevant for you all as you work through the hotel tax budget um, every year and you look at, at a request for these funds. I'm gonna focus on the Alpine City Hotel Occupancy Tax. If you're from another city or want to apply for hotel tax grants from another city or from another county, the laws are going to be very similar, in some cases pretty identical, but there are some subtle differences when it comes to things like limits on how much a city can spend on a particular category. So I'll just note that on the outset. If you're if you're looking to apply for, for tax grants elsewhere, don't hesitate to visit with me. We, we literally wrote a, a small book on this. Um, okay, so let's dive into this. So um, we get a lot of questions about hotel taxes and a lot of hypotheticals. You know, can I use hotel taxes for this purpose or that purpose? And you know, we're happy to answer those for you all. Feel free to shout them out now or later, however it works for you. Um, the tax code requires that every expenditure of hotel tax follow a two-part task, right? And so the first part of that two-part task says that every expenditure of hotel tax revenue must directly promote and enhance tourism and the hotel and convention industry. Well, that's a mouthful. Uh, so let's break that down. Every expenditure, it's not some, not most, every dollar, every expenditure must follow this two-part test. Every expenditure must directly promote tourism in the hotel and convention industry. Well, I mentioned hypothetical questions. Here's an easy one you'll all be able to answer. Um, so there's a lot of questions that turn on that word directly. Is this a direct promotion of tourism and the hotel and convention industry? I'll give you an easy example. So years and years ago, I've been doing this job forever. But years and years ago, I was brand new at it. And I went out to a town in the panhandle and did a city council meeting, spent the night in the city, went back. Mayor called me up a week or two later, said, thanks for coming, Justin. When you stayed in our town, did you happen to taste the tap water? And I said, I can't remember, Mayor. He says, well, you must not have because you would have remembered if you did. We, when we ask people what they like and don't like about visiting our town, they always complain that our water tastes real bad here. And we know that the tourists and hotel guests would like better tasting water. And we want to use some hotel tax money for a water treatment plant. <laughs> Is that something that directly brought tourism in the hotel budget? No. Would it make the town a nicer place to live? Yes. Would it make the town a nicer place to visit? Yes, but that's not a direct promotion of tourism in the hotel and convention industry. Well, what is? Well, some examples would be, you know, funding. We had a question earlier before we started about art walk, right? Funding that arts event that tourists and hotel guests attend. Funding that sporting event that tourists and hotel guests attend. Paying for advertising and promotion. Advertising and promoting Alpine as a tourism destination. Promoting your city on, you know, the, the social media. Promoting your city in print magazines, right? These are all things that have a, a direct connection between spending the dollar of hotel taxes and hotel activity. And in the law, we say that's a nexus. There's a nexus between spending the dollar and hotel activity, right? So it needs to be, needs to be this direct connection, not indirect, but direct. All right, back to this long sense. Every expenditure must directly promote and enhance tourism and the hotel and convention industry. Okay, you'll notice the word and appears in that sentence a few times, but the word or is not in that sentence at all. Tourism actually has a specific definition. Does anyone want to take a stab at how they would define a tourist? You're probably not going to get it wrong. Anybody want to guess? Heather. Heather, <laughs> how would you define a tourist? How would, I define how would you define a tourist? Yes. Um, someone who comes to our city for a... Just stop right there. Tourist. Somebody comes to your city. Just that's it. That's it. That's the definition of a tourist in the tax code. Somebody visiting your city from another city or another county. So somebody who pops over from, from Marfa for the day, guess what? They're a tourist in Alpine. 
but it's not enough that we merely promote tourism. We have to promote tourism and the hotel and convention industry. So you've, if you've been to one of those sessions before, you know this thing. I refer to myself oftentimes as a double scumbag. I'm a scumbag lawyer and I'm a scumbag lobbyist. But if you're in the hotel business, I'm your scumbag. So <laughs> what that means is during legislative sessions, we spend a lot of time roaming the, the halls of the Pink Dome, talking with legislators about hotel issues, hotel tax issues, et cetera. There's always proposals to expand the use of hotel tax revenue. Um, there's always proposals to do new things with hotel tax revenue. And I get pulled into a lot of meetings with staffers, and sometimes, especially as the session goes on and the pressure's on with the calendar, people get pretty short and say, Justin, why are hotels so greedy? And sometimes they put a word before greedy. Why are hotels so greedy? Why does your industry always ask the legislature to maintain the standard, right? Where every expenditure directly votes tourism and the hotel industry. These are public tax dollars. Well, you have to go all the way back to the 1960s and the origins of the hotel tax. It was a compromise then and it's a compromise now. If you haven't spent the night at a hotel in Texas in a while, first of all, you should get out and do it. But two, when you do, you'll notice that the tax rate you're paying to stay at a hotel is pretty high. We always say we're a low tax state. You hear that all the time, right? Well, you know, the combined state and local hotel tax in a city like El Paso is 17 and percent. That is higher than anywhere on either coast than Chicago or any of these high tax areas. You'll pay a higher tax rate in the city of El Paso than you will in New York City. Can you believe it? It's true. And on average, hotel tax rates are 13% when we combine the local and the state hotel tax. But this compromise will actually go along as an industry with that higher tax rate, believe it or not, if that tax money, at least the local tax money, is used to directly promote tourism and hotel activity. Because we know when somebody spends the night in a hotel in your city, they're contributing hotel tax dollars to your city, of course. But what else are they doing? Well, they're eating in your restaurants, they're shopping in your stores, they're generating sales tax revenue, property tax revenues are affected, right? All this general economic development activity. Hotel tax is an economic development tool. So that's why hotels are so blank greedy, right? Why we continue to have this mandate in place. The tax rates are real high. Tax is too damn high. All right, so back to that long sentence. Every expenditure must directly promote and enhance tourism in the hotel and convention industry. You've heard this be reduced to a single phrase, a simple phrase. Heads and beds. That's it. That's the phrase you hear, heads and beds. Is it, have you all heard that phrase before? You have. And um, you know, that's true. That's an easy way to think of it. My friends over at the uh, Texas, for, Texas for the Arts would always want me to point out, it could be day activity at hotels too, maybe a banquet. We just have to have economic activity at a hotel related to that tourism activity. We clear on the first part of the two-part test? I have a question. Sure. Do Airbnbs are considered heads and beds? Uh, do Airbnb, or Air, is Airbnb activity, maybe short-term rental activity, is that considered to be heads and beds? Absolutely. So. Um, under the tax code, a short-term rental facility or, or uh, place is a quote-unquote hotel, right? And so if we're talking about hotels, it's pretty much anything that's rented, a building, let me be clear, any building that's rented out for overnight accommodations for less than 30 days. It could be a room in a building, it could be the whole building, can't be like an RV, but if it's, if it's a building rented out for less than 30 days, that is quote-unquote a hotel for hotel tax purposes. That is an excellent question. So does it become a building once it's got like Permanent plumbing and uh, electrical. Yeah, there's a so there's a definition. Is that like TPs and weirdness. Sure, TPs and, and weirdness and what is considered quote unquote to be a hotel. Generally, yes, if it's got a foundation or if it's on a foundation, it's considered to be a hotel. I will note though that if it's still an operable trailer, like a it could be pole, mm -hmm. that is subject to the motor vehicle rental tax and not the hotel occupancy tax. So we get that question all the time, actually. Um, you know how what taxes apply to those types of facilities. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we've got a dollar of hotel tax money. We want to spend it, right? Maybe you're the person who wants it spent on your thing. First thing we got to check is, do we have this direct connection between that spending, that spending that dollar and tourism activity? The answer is yes, that's great. We can move on to the second part of the two-part test, which is a series of categories. And there are eight categories for the city of Alpine. Don't worry, we won't be here all night, but we will talk about them at least a little bit. First category, yes. And I will note that not every category that's legal is actually available for a grant. That is true. So the first 
category would be the prime example, Chris. The first category is convention centers and visitor information centers, right? So a community can use, for example, hotel tax money to fund a convention center facility. That convention center facility must be owned or managed by the city or county government. Not something you would use an application for for a hotel tax grant, but it is something that hotel tax money can, can go towards, right? a convention center or a visitor information center. That visitor information center does not have to be owned or managed by our city, city or county government, but it can be. But staffing that visitor information center, for example, that can be covered with hotel tax money, and it is. Wonderful use of hotel tax money. That's category one. Me. That's you. <laughs> category two convention delegates. So if you've got a large convention, think like maybe the big convention center in Houston, the George R. Brown, right? You need people to work registration and you, they can use hotel tax money for that purpose. Registration of convention attendees. Category three is advertising and promotion. And this is, is our argument, one of the most effective uses of hotel tax money. You may use hotel tax money to advertise and conduct solicitations to attract tourists and hotel guests to your event that's attended by tourists and hotel guests or to attract people to the community at large, right? And so this category is vitally important. What Chris's work does is primarily advertising and promoting Alpine as a tourism destination. Well, what is advertising anyway? Do we ever, we ever want to try and define it? Well, the tax code doesn't offer a definition. It's pretty much anything that is in the plain and ordinary meaning of that, that word, right? So it could be print advertising or social media advertising, or radio, television, anything along those lines. That could be forms of advertising. This category has a minimum expenditure associated with it. For the city of Alpine, the city must expend at least 50% of its annual hotel tax budget on conducting the advertisements and solicitations to attract tourists and hotel guests to the area. This is unique to Alpine. Most cities have a lower expenditure requirement, but Alpine's is, Alpine is different. We all know that, that's why we love it. Um, but Alpine's got this requirement for 50, at least 50% must be categorized on this particular category. Of what we actually bring in at revenue. That is correct. So just using easy numbers here, if you collected $100,000 of hotel tax revenue in the fiscal year, the city would have to spend at least $50,000 on advertising and promotion. Now, I will tell you, even with that bare minimum, when the Texas Association of Convention and Visitors Bureau does polling on this every year, we realize or know that the statewide average is about 60%. So cities spend on average across the state about 60% of their budget on advertising and conducting solicitations of some kind. I like this category because I think it has a good ROI component to it. I also like it though too, because it's somewhat broad. And so you may have an event where the underlying event expenses don't qualify for hotel tax funding because it doesn't fit within any of these categories, but you may still use hotel tax revenue to advertise and promote that event. A prime example would be fireworks for the 4th of July. A city can't spend hotel tax money on 4th of July fireworks, even though we know tourists and hotel guests are gonna probably attend that fireworks display, right? People who are in town anyway, they're probably gonna go to that fireworks display. I would if I was in town, um, but it's not enough if we stop there, right? We have to fit it within one of these categories. The problem with fireworks is they don't fit within any one of these, these eight categories we're talking about today, but we could always advertise and promote that big 4th of July fireworks. And we may be able to pay, pay a band to play there in the next category, which I'll talk about. But any questions so far? Yes, ma'am. Is there a jurisdiction limit on where that money is spent? Do you have to be spent in the location where the event is, or does it have to be spent, the advertising money spent outside of that? Event? Let me answer that question as it relates to state law first, and then if there's any specific city policies, then some of the city staff will be able to answer that, right? Because I'm laying out what the state law is. Cities can be more restrictive on what they approve hotel tax grants for. Just, just note that, right? Um, so the answer is the event, the, 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 the event can be promoted pretty much wherever, right? We can promote an event anywhere as long as we're likely to have hotel guests spending the night here in Alpine, right? So if we've got an event that's outside of the city limits, but we believe that people who are attending that event are gonna be spending the night in hotels in the city of Alpine, we can fund hotel tax revenue, fund that event with hotel tax revenue if it fits within this two-part test. Does that answer that question? Yeah, well, uh, or, or now, Laura, were you asking about the location of the event or the location of well, the ads? Well, that was a good ad. Well, let me answer that question about the ads, too. The, let me ask a question about the ads. And is there a radius requirement for Alpine? Do you know uh, Yeah, right now, our, our working definition is the tri-county area is out of bounds 
Except Presidio. Except Presidio. Okay. So, so the you under Alpine's rules, City of Alpine's rules. Again, it's very being more restrictive when, than what state law is, and that's just fine. That you your advertising must occur outside the tri county area, with the exception of the City of Presidio. That's pretty common for communities to have that local mileage requirement, right? Um, you know, in order to to really try and reach a diverse group of travelers, that's the reason for for that requirement. So that was could have been part of your question for sure. But in terms of the state, what is the state's definition? So the state doesn't have a definition. And so, and you know, that's critically important too, Chris, right? Because we, uh, we want to see a situation, we don't want to see a situation where the state is trying to force a single policy on various types of communities, right? So I was in uh, Monaghan's three weeks ago doing a hotel tax seminar for that community. And someone asked a question, can we rent out a billboard in Monaghan's using Monaghan's city hotel tax money for a big event along, you know, and the billboard's located on I-20? And you know, can we can we do that? It's in the city limits. And the answer would be well, it depends on city policy, but state law would allow that. And the reason why is yes, there's gonna be a lot of Monahan's residents that are gonna see that billboard all the time, right? But there's a lot of people driving on I-20 who are going between points far between, right? So they may be more likely to stop off or come back to Monaghan's during the timing of that event. And so therefore, maybe it makes sense to have a policy that allows for that local advertiser, maybe an exception in certain cases, right? So, so there's not a statewide statewide rule. You had a question. So would this, would stamps be something that can be done for advertising, you know, putting stamps on letterhead or Direct mail, flyers, direct mail. Oh, yeah, yeah, direct mail. Sure. So the question is, would, would that be categorized as advertising? Yeah, yeah. Money spent for advertising, and then banners, stuff like that. Yes. So promote your event. Yes, I think so. The, the, yeah, I can answer for Alpine. Sure. Right. Uh, for, and, and direct mail, yes, if the address <coughs> is outside of the Tri County area. Correct. Yeah. Banners, yes, if they're going to be displayed outside of the Tri County area. Oh, but if it's going to be displayed at the event, then uh -huh. we don't really see the connection of bringing people in. So the big street ones, they have to fund themselves. Right now, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. So so that's exactly it. So so would would those types of banners and 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 uh, logos and whatnot would they qualify as after motion? The answer is probably, but depending on on the location. Yeah. Any other questions about this category? Anything else we've covered so far? All right. Let's talk about arts related events and expenditures. I know it's something that's really important to a lot of you. You can use hotel tax revenue for the application and promotion of the arts. Um, this is the tax code's got this laundry list of things that the legislature has considered to be an acceptable form of art eligible for funding. It's pretty long. The most important things, they're the, or the most common thing, let me say, that we see cities use uh, hotel tax funds that are arts related are going to be like live music, theatrical performances, sculpture, painting, any of those sort of things, right? You can use hotel tax revenue to pay for the costs associated with that arts related item. Remember, this has got to be a public sort of performance or art piece, right? Tourists and hotel guests have to be likely to see it. So you know, if you wanted to paint, pay somebody to, you know, to do a second Alpine mural or third Alpine mural, how many have we got? There are right. city policies on murals as well. So glad the law. Okay. Yeah. First, you got to check with Chris on the local rules. <laughs> but then two, can you use hotel tax money under state law? Is it allowable? And the answer would be yes. And hopefully, you know, this that's a, a mural that people are going to stop and take a selfie in front of and post on Instagram and all the rest. Tag, tag visit Alpine, right? Um, so you you can use hotel tax revenue for arts related events and activities. I will note. We talked about a minimum expenditure with advertising promotion a, a, a few minutes ago, right? You could think of that like a floor, right? The city can't go below go below that floor for, for advertising. Well, there's a ceiling associated with arts related events and expenditures. The city may not expend more than 15% of its annual hotel tax budget on arts related events and activities, right? So that's a that's a hard limit. And again, if we use just easy numbers, city collects $100,000 worth of hotel taxes in a fiscal year, the city can spend no more than $15,000 on all arts related expenditures combined, not just your one event, but all combined across the city. This is a statewide standard. This is not unique to Alpine. Um, it is, it's been something that, you know, cities do bump into that cap pretty regularly. So you need to keep this in mind too when you're applying for funds, that that pool of available money may be smaller than if you were fitting yourself into a different category. Um, I will note one additional thing about this category, and this is a bit of an interesting development. Over the last few years, the Texas Attorney General's Office has taken an opinion, or taken the opinion, I should say, that 
a city may not use hotel tax money under this category to construct a facility. So somewhat interesting, this came out of the city of Lakeway in the Austin area. They wanted to build a performing arts center with hotel tax money. And the AG takes the position that the, uh, the, the building a facility is not used in the language of that particular category and therefore it's not allowed. Now, I don't know that I fully buy into that, but that's the position of the AG. So keep that in mind as well. So are we about to leave arts? Yes, we are. Then let me let me go ahead and give a quick, quick rundown. So uh, anybody wanting to apply for an arts event, yes, Alpine almost, uh, almost exclusively uses it on music. Uh, we get more requests, or we certainly did last year, than we actually can meet in that 15%. And so uh, last year, the committee for the first time was not uh, able to meet everybody's requests. So we, what we wound up doing is shifting some of that money to advertising. And so that's something where since we have the requirement to spend at least half that we really count on our grant applicants to ask for and then spend money on advertising. It doesn't help us a lot if they ask for advertising money, but it doesn't get spent. That means I have to often at the end of the year come up with a big ad buy and it might not be as well, uh, as well planned strategically as it might be because I'm, the hand is forced, you know, well, we, that didn't get spent. We've got to spend it. So anyway, yeah. Uh, and point. the thing with murals is that the city's policy is that since a mural is a capital asset that's being funded by taxes, that they have to be on city property, which very strongly limits the way that murals can be funded. Now that can always change if the council decides that's not what they want to do. But right now, uh, that's the policy. That's great. That's great information. Yeah. So like you say music, but then there are other like we have we have an even that does pictures with Santa. Is that art kind of thing that people take? So I'm just kind of curious what makes it just live music where people can take selfie and uh, drawing face painting art versus having picture taken with a Santa. What I'm not looking to limit the definition of art. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm just saying most often people ask for music. Okay. Yeah, photography is is in one in that in that list there, right? So I, I suppose it could be counted. I'm not going to try to question that. Yeah, the committee okay. the committee is going to uh, decide what's the most strategic use sure. of the funds. And I so see. if there's competition, they might say, you know, I we think that we're going to get more uh, more visitors from this concert right. than from the Santa photos. So. I so we'll give you money to invite people to come. Yeah. To right, because that's where you would ask for advertising money instead. Yes. You yes. Spend your own yes. money on the Santa. That's right. Bring people in from out of the area to come get those pictures taken with Santa. Um, and so that's that's a, the, the right approach here. And, and by the way, for all of these things, it's easy for me to to come up with a you know this is allowable, this is not allowable under the law analysis, or even sometimes if it's a gray area, I'll tell you this is a gray area. Um, but you know, I leave the room. I go back to Austin. I'm not here to make the really the harder decisions as to we have a legal use of hotel tax money. Do we have a good use of hotel tax money? Right? Did we get? Is this something we want to spend hotel tax money on? That's a tougher question to answer, in my opinion. Um, and and luckily for me, I'm not the one who usually has to answer, with the exception of a committee in Austin. Um, okay. So, any more questions about arts? Let's talk about historical restoration and preservation. You may use hotel tax revenue for historical restoration and preservation projects and activities, right? Preserving that historical site that's visited by tourists and hotel guests. You can use hotel tax money for that, that purpose. A few things to note about this. The term historical preservation and restoration, the terms, are not defined further by the tax code. So we go to the Code Construction Act, and that tells us that we have to come up with a reasonable interpretation of what those terms would mean in their ordinary and plain usage in the community. Historical, there's not a requirement under state law, there may be locally, but there's not a requirement under state law, for example, that that historical site be listed on a state or a national historic registry, okay? Not a state law requirement. But we just have to use that plain meaning. Is this a historical item that we're preserving? Restoring and preserving plain and ordinary usage there, not building things that are brand new that don't have a historical record, right? So I sit on the Historical Landmarks Commission in the city of Austin and every year, the German Free School applies for a temporary stage for South by Southwest. They get held every year the same thing. That South by Southwest stage did not exist in a historical record for your school. It dates back to the 1850s. Sorry, go apply for a hotel tax grant from the Arts Commission. 
So just keep that in mind. Any quite well, hang on, one more thing to note about this. There's a limit on this particular category as well. Like the arts, it's limited to 15% of the city's total hotel tax collection. So keep that in mind as well. No more than 15% of the tax revenue can be categorized as historical restoration, preservation projects and activities. Any questions about that? I would ask Chris, has there been anything approached with the city as far as city property when it comes to this yet? Uh, it hasn't come up. We haven't had any, the, the only request that we had uh, that then was canceled because of COVID was the Big Bend Conservation Alliance was going to do an Adobe workshop at the Hotel Ritchie. So that was going to be uh, bringing people in to participate in the workshop, uh, the educational aspects of the workshop and advertising that it would result in some enhancements to that property. Mm -hmm. But so that it hasn't come up yet. Okay. okay, interesting. All right, moving right along. Sporting events. You may use hotel tax revenue for a sporting event in which the majority of the participants are tourists and in which there's substantial economic activity in the area hotels. Now we know what a tourist is. What's a tourist? Anybody who comes to town. Anybody who comes to town, right? So the majority of the participants in that sporting event must be from outside the area. We're looking to avoid funding like a pure little, local little league event, for example. The majority of the participants must be tourists and there must be substantial economic activity area hotels. You all define what that looks like for your community. The message being here, this is not a typical Friday night football game. This is something where we're likely to get a lot of tourists and hotel guests in attendance. Hotel tax money can go for the cost associated with putting on that event. We can go all the way up to the line of building infrastructure for the sporting event, but not cross that. We can't get to infrastructure. That's another category from some, for some cities that I could talk about if you have a question. You do not have that authority in Alpine. But you can do pay for things like paying for the registration costs for the teams, the referees, the umpires, um, food and beverage, you know, transportation, those sort of things. You can use hotel tax revenue to pay the costs associated with putting on the sporting event. Any questions about that category? All right, just a few more to go. Is there a limit on that? There's not, 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 not a floor nor a ceiling. Um, just two more categories to go. Transportation systems for tourists. You may use hotel tax revenue for a transportation system that transports tourists to or from a hotel, from a hotel to a commercial center of the city. So, you know, think, think about downtown here. Um, from a hotel to a tourist attraction in or near the city or from a tourist attraction or from a hotel to the convention center, right? So this got to start or end at a hotel. This can't be general city bus service. It's got to be specific for tourists, but it can be something that you set up for a specific event. It doesn't have to be something that runs every day or every week. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So you may have that big event or activity that you need transportation costs paid for in some way, this may be a category you can use to get there. And I can answer specifics about this if anyone has any questions. Okay, one more category, y'all. Signage. You can use hotel tax revenue for what they refer to in, in the business as tourism-oriented directional signage. TODS is that acronym. Um, essentially, this is wayfinding signage that directs people who are visiting to sites or attractions that are visited by tourists and hotel guests, right? So this could be a TxDOT sign, for example. In fact, this is why this, this category was created, because TxDOT was charging an arm and a leg for wayfinding signage. But it could be a city sign, it could be a private sign, it doesn't matter, but you can pay the cost associated with this wayfinding signage, again, providing we're, we're doing wayfinding for a tourist attraction. Any questions about that? And that one is reserved to the city. City only. Somebody, so that means uh, we assign a budget amount to that category. So far, we've used it for historical interpretation, which is a gray area as defined by, by Justin, but is associated with a specific place of tourist interest. That's what we use for it most often. So what I would suggest if anybody has signed ideas is bring them to me. We'll discuss them. I'll take them to the city manager and we'll see, is it a good fit for our plans now or in the future. Because people can't specifically apply right. for signage on their own. Exactly. Right. It's not, not a great category. Yeah. So the signage on the historical plaques that were being done four or five years ago. Historic Association. So it didn't come out of the house. It came out of Main Street Fund originally. That's right. why they all say Main Street when we were Main Street community. And now the new updated ones were started by the old Historic Association and just finished by the new 
really rejuvenated sort of store association. So I'm a rep, but it's not going to matter because we're completely changing all their numbers with the new app that we purchased to do the historic, redo the historic and mural tours. But that was Main Street community originally. That's why they say that this is a Main Street project or something like that. So the street sign is not considered an assignment under that category? Well, it needs to be wayfinding. That's right. It needs to direct people. Right. Uh, and Well, it says it's at the Alpine Civic Center or something like that. That's not way. So if you had a sign, like maybe it was a green sign or a blue sign, for example, that says Alpine Civic Center with an arrow, okay. right? Or one mile, whatever. That would be wayfinding signage. Or a sign that says... Museum of the Big Bend, right. that way, that's wayfinding signage. Those are the kind of signs that could be funded with hotel tax money. I know, I was thinking about the so, things that the outdoor theater does or that the Sol Ross Theater does, but those are date-based sandwich signs. Those may be advertising and promotion. Even yeah. if it says one mile ahead, it will but it be a permanent sign, not for your event. Yeah. It would have to be generic for every single thing in the Civic Center. It yeah. But, you know, if... And, and there's a question of how important is it that that be funded out of that particular thing be funded out of the hot tax, but I would, I would consider if it, if it felt like a real need that there's an event coming up and that is going to be a place of tourist interest right. during the event. So if it really seems like people can't find it, I see. And, we, and, and then, then yeah, we, we would sure consider putting, you know, allowing something like that. Yeah. But they're not that expensive, and so we yeah. probably really push you towards advertising anyway. Right. Okay. Yeah, I agree with all that. Yep. Okay, so let's recap. We got a dollar hotel tax money. We want to spend it. What's the first thing we need to do? We need to make sure it passes the first part of the two-part test. Is it directly promote and enhance tourism in the hotel and convention industry? The answer is yes. That's great. We've got to fit it now into one of these eight categories. And really, if you're an applicant, maybe may fewer than eight categories, but just talk about them all: convention centers and visitor information centers, convention delegates advertising and conducting solicitations to attract tourists and hotel guests to the area or to your event, funding for arts related events and expenditures, historical restoration and preservation, sporting events in which the majority of participants are tours, tourists and which there's substantial economic activity area hotels. We have um, transportation system for tourists and way or wayfinding signage you have a legal use of hotel tax money. You now, under state law, may apply for a hotel tax grant. And if you're in city government, you can approve that hotel tax grant. Again, though, assuming here that we've also looked at the return on investment, determined we have a good use of hotel tax money. What other questions do y'all have for me? Yes, sir. You talked about the city of Alpine a lot, and we're from the South Bridge County. Okay. So how, it doesn't seem like a lot of this is really relevant to that in South Brewster where there's no incorporated town. Right. How do people there come to Alpine and apply as not being residents or business owners or anything else in the city of Alpine proper? How would they use these tax benefits? And you know, and, and how, how you know they're not under any kind of jurisdiction sure. or nothing like that. Well, how's that the reason I'm asking these is because a huge amount of the money that comes here comes from South Brewster County. Right. And you've got all the hotels and all the BBs, and then you got the National Park and uh -huh. so on and so forth, where most of, I think, hotel, hotel tax coming here is relevant from business there. Well, let me talk about, I can answer that. Of course, you may have an answer here too, as far as who can apply for hotel tax funds. Okay. But so Bruce South County is subject to the Brewster County hotel occupancy tax, right? So this is the this is a city of Alpine hotel tax workshop, but this the county has its own hotel occupancy tax that is collected in unincorporated areas of the county. So pretty much everything outside of the city limits of Alpine is subject to the Brewster County hotel tax. And the county commissioners decide how that hotel tax revenue can be expended. And there's actually a written in the state law, at least a third of that money must be spent outside of the city limits uh, of the county hotel tax must be spent outside of the city limits. The Brewster County Tourism Council really gets the lion's share of that hotel tax revenue. And that, that council advises the commissioner's court on how to spend the Brewster County 
hotel occupancy tax. So if you've got an event or an activity, you could possibly apply for a grant from Brewster County, that's, that's occurring in say South County, you could, you could possibly apply for a hotel tax grant from Brewster County. The laws governing that tax are nearly identical. Really the only thing that's going to be different about that is that there's no sporting related events and activities. And then two, there is a, um, the, the limits in some of these categories are not going to apply for the county's hotel occupancy tax. And so, yes, it's true. So, and, the, and the, you know, the, the largest hotel tax payers in the county are not in the city of Alpine, right? Gage, Gage Hotel and, and Lajitas, right? Those are the largest, by dollar, dollar you know, numbers, the largest uh, contributors of hotel tax in the area, that money goes, to the, goes over to the Brewster County. So, so I have a question. They get funded. Do you get any fund money from their tourism committee? When the Brewster County Tourism Council was founded 25 years ago, they their stated mission was we're going to bring people to the county line, and so they were intended and functioned as a purely advertising right. body. So they purposely did no spending inside the county and said, if you want to put on an event, we'll bring people to it. But if you're on your own, that, that was part, that was their mission. That was the definition of how they were going to do things. Mm -hmm. uh, more recently, they've had partnerships that have sometimes been good, sometimes been a little fraught with yep. the area chambers. And so they, there's been some funding going that way. I haven't, I have been privy to those relationships in the last five or 10 years, you know, it's about 10 years ago, I guess, maybe 15 that they started doing that. Uh, but as far as I know, they don't actually have a grant program. Uh, it's still, they are starting to shift yeah. some of their spending towards visitor center yes. sort of expenditures yes. because of basically the over tourism Indeed. situation yep. in South County. Yep. Um, now to answer your question in terms of when would an event be eligible to apply for uh, a grant from the city of Alpine, well, you'd have to make the case that that event was actually going to bring Alpine hotel activity. Because to be perfectly honest, Brewster County has three times easily the hotel tax collections yes. budget that Alpine has. And so uh, they've already, if, there's plenty of hotel activity going around in the county. Um, the one time we've done it was the uh, the Martha Film Festival. We uh, did some hotel tax grants from Alpine for them, and that really came up because when I started this job, I sat down with every hotelier and just did a anecdotal interview. Said, "Tell me what events bring money, you bring guests to you." And Martha Film Festival was near the top of the list for Alpine hotels, and so since I had that to go on, we could you know we could make that arrangement with them. Uh, and so what you'd be looking at would be, you'd have to make the case in the application and you'd have to convince one, the hotel occupancy tax grant committee, because this is something everybody should know. Uh, all the applications are reviewed by the committee uh, against the, uh, the goals and, and budget limits, et cetera, that the law and, and Alpine has one hotel occupancy tax grant what about committee. Brewster County, Brewster County has, has their them. own tourism council, right. so they so, set it up however they want. As far as I know, they don't do grants at all. It's still true. Yes. A, a question, Justin. Thank you for answering my question about that. But, but it seems like what's happening too with a lot of South County, uh, with all this revenue, we've got this steamroller effect going. It's a snowball coming downhill with the tourism. And I realize now so such a vast majority of all of our money that's the top tax related is going to bring more people and bringing more people and bringing more people and more people. Well, we have the snowball coming downhill. We don't have and the infrastructure. There's no, there's no, infra, there's no right. personnel to service those which are serve, which are visit, tourism related. There's no service people for restaurants and we don't have fuel capabilities. We, we run out of gas because there's too many tourists. Okay. And it happens here, you know, and we, we run out of food and people have a three hour waiting line at a restaurant, which is crazy because there's no employees to work. So, but isn't it strange that we would purposefully set this up so that we're just going to have this 
giant snowball and we we really it's it'll flounder in my opinion because at some point you've got people with bad reviews going couldn't find a place to eat in this town don't come you know couldn't find drinking that, that water falls on that, that falls on that county tourism council to start focusing on their efforts not with Hoffman's but on economic development but one needs to be area what the one would need to be developed i'm thinking no, well, no, you have, have, it. You have it. it exists. It exists right now. I mean, Bill Ivey's the head of it. Right. Oh, the tourism council. The tourism council, but yeah, they they work with the local chambers, so they would they would have to decide that their focus is going to change from just getting from people just here. Getting people yes, that's right. Yeah, and and they're they're doing that in that they like the blessing Robert told me, and that this was four months ago probably uh, was that there's no promotions going on in first quarter. You know they're not they're not advertising at all, uh, and that they're shifting uh, sizable for certainly from our perspective sizable chunks of the funds towards uh, converting those uh, visitor center kiosks, those information centers, into actual staffed right. facilities. So they're trying to spend more of the trying to spend more of the money. Well, and they're trying, but well, it's within the law. It is. What can they They're do? Yeah. The money, so yeah, and and, and trying to take care of where needs that they that they legally can. So you know, I get this question from them every year. They should do this question. You know, can we use hotel tax money for roll on roll off dumpsters, right? Mm -hmm. Particularly during spring break and whatnot. And it's, yeah, put them next to the visitor center. And you know, if you could do that, you put them next to the visitor center, right? When the, when the park closed down because of the government shutdown, um, we looked at creative ways of using hotel tax money to allow people to still visit the park um, under the current law. You know, we look at even changing the law at one point for Brewster County. The, the Brewster County hoteliers asked for the county hotel tax many years ago, right? There, it was actually the hoteliers that, that wanted the Brewster County hotel tax for the purpose of marketing Visit Big Ben, marketing the area as, as Visit Big Ben. They've been tremendously successful, as you point out, right? They're tremendously successful at bringing people to the area. Um, I agree that, that infrastructure is a problem. It always has been, but it's getting much, much more of a problem. Um, it seems like, you know, every time I go down there, there's like 50 new Airbnbs that have popped up, you know, in, 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 compared to the last time I was there. Um, and I go a lot, you know, I, so it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of an issue for sure, but I, but I think, the argument needs to go to the Brewster County Tourism Council. Do you all, Tourism Council, want to change your policy and your approach with how you use these hotel tax revenues within the confines of the current law and then we're potentially changing the law? We'd be happy to help them do that as well um, in order to better serve the tourism community in the South County. Well, it's really pushing too from your, your actual county commissioners and making their focus like on housing for people to live in down there so that you have workers and that's sure. the kind of thing and airbnb yes they pay us but they're also it's a double-edged sword because then they take away affordable housing in both it is true areas. yes it's so, very true how do they appoint the council so they're, they're uh, the, so, they so the, the tourism council is appointed by the county commissioners and the county commissioners of course are and, and the county judge are elected Right. There's one county commissioner for whatever district you live in, and then of course countywide county judge. And so the county the, they appoint the tourism council and approve the bylaws. We just went through a big bylaw re review process for them, but well, it's right before COVID, so 2019, 2020, it's 2020. <laughs> um, we, we helped them redraft bylaws and, and kind of change the structure a little bit with how representation works for that tourism council. It's mostly geographic based, so like there's a guaranteed number of, of board seats from marathon for example right and some and then a certain number from various types of lodging establishments in the south county um etc so it, that's that's how how that that occurs thank you you're welcome yeah it, it's a pickle to say the least i have a question i have a question well, and here is the chair of the Bruce hey, County Bill. Tourism Council <laughs> at the back of the room. So specific questions can be, we were just, Bill, talking about the challenges you guys are facing uh, in the South County communities with infrastructure issues with over tourism and how, what are, and whether there are any hotel occupancy tax related strategies that can be taken and so i mentioned your shifting funds from advertising to visitor center expenditures and things like that but if uh 
if anybody has specific questions for Bill. <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be glad to answer what questions I, I, I can answer. And it sounds like you've uh, uh, explained pretty well what we're doing. Um, there's, we've had an influx just as Alpine has with thrones of truth. Bill, do you mind going to the yeah, yeah, that's yeah, people people on on the the oh, oh, okay. You know, we, we've had a tremendous uh, increasing, excuse me, I had back surgery, so I'm a little, I'm a little slower. Would you like a chair? No, 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 I'm fine. Uh, good to, good see, to see you, Bill. Good yeah. to see you, you too. Um, as, as you all know, Alpine has experienced a tremendous uh, increase in tourism, just like the South Brewster County. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, uh, one of the main reasons is we've worked very hard to in increase visitation to Brewster County. Uh, Alpine gains from that as well. Certainly. Uh, as does Fort Davis and Marfa and everybody else. So uh, there's several other things going on there. There's a lot more people in Texas now. Uh, I think the population in the past five years has increased a couple of million people. And this is a cool place to come. And so folks that are moving to Texas and want to come and see uh, this part of Texas, and then they go back and tell their friends, and then they want to come. So um, we have received, a, you know, a concern, I guess, and that we're getting too many tourists, too many visitors, if that's possible. And mainly that stems from, as, as was just mentioned, the infrastructure. So do we have enough restaurants? Do we have enough motel rooms? Do we have enough all of that? So the 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 the, the, the tourists, the visitation in the Big Bend area in Brewster County, is kind of surpassed what our what we can handle. Um, I have the Starlight Theater, and it's not uncommon to have a two hour wait list um, to get in to, to sit down to eat. Normally, you think that's great. I don't. I, I hate telling people you've got to wait two hours, but there's nowhere else, uh, there's not many other places to eat. So it's a matter of planning. One thing that is absolutely for sure is change and we're experiencing that. So it's up to the people in this room, the people listening on Zoom, um, uh, and interested citizens of Alpine, Brewster County, to make that change happen to the, everyone's benefit. And, you know, it's, it's not an easy process and it's not a quick process, but it is something that we're experiencing. Success can be a, a pretty hard thing to swallow at times, but that's what we're experiencing. We've got a lot of people coming. So uh, one of the approaches that we're, we're taking, and this guy right here will tell you what's legal and what's not, and we, we talk to him all the time, um, is that we've shifted some of our marketing, as you, I'm assuming you probably already heard that, that those tourism tax dollars can only be spent in very specific ways. And one of the main ways is marketing. And that's where the uh, uh, Bruce County Tourism Council has concentrated most of their efforts in the past. So um, we're shifting that now to offer um, visitors a better experience when they get here. So it's not just that visitor that is coming to the Big Bend. They're coming anyway. They're going to come. We, we experienced that during COVID. They're coming. So part of it is we need to take care of those visitors when they're here. And we felt that the visitor centers that we'll put one in Marathon and we'll put one in South County there in, in, in Street View. And will offer a better experience for, and, and more information and everything for those visitors. So that's that's where we're kind of shifting some of our, our, our funding is taking care of the visitors that are, they're hardly coming. I mean, we will never, and I can promise you this, the Brewster County uh, Tourism Council will never take down the welcome sign. We'll never do that. We'll always encourage folks to come to the Big Bend. Whether I was on the council or not, I would still I'd tell folks it's a great place to come. We all know that. So it Bill, is. with that being said, you're gonna take care of your tourists that come through. And you mentioned your restaurant has a two hour wait. So would you switch 
your plans and say, okay, we need to either build more seating or an extra room or open another restaurant so that the tourists don't have to wait for two hours. That would be wonderful. But that comes into the private sector and it might even uh, come into the, um, well, some of the auspices of the Brewster County um, Commissioner's Court. How can they help businesses get established? Mm -hmm. And that, that's a big part of it. In South County, it's not so much here in Alpine, but we have a shortage of places to eat. And just depending on what day it is in Alpine. Or it's in Alpine, it's the right. same thing. <laughs> <laughs> in Alpine, some days yeah. there's a shortage yeah. of places. Bill, is is there any thing, is there any discussion on the council about uh, exploring some of those other categories like promotion of the arts and historical and looking at grant based programs to use some of those funds in non advertising ways? We we already do fund the historical part of it. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the the county receives seven percent of our funding. Okay. Uh, each, each year, and uh, that's how the courthouse. Got re That's right. That's got right. renovated. So we're already doing that. So we're we're pretty much we we try to stay within the guidelines. Of course. But we're already doing that, and we still you know we still have a lot of money. So and Alpine's experiencing the same thing. Yeah. So and we know event grant based stuff like what we do here. We do not. And I was involved with the, uh, the tourism council from the very beginning uh, when it was established. And that was something that we established from day one. We will not do events. We're not going to do events. We're stuck to that. Now, what we do is that, uh, for example, um, we might sponsor. Yeah, I was going to say, I've seen lots more sponsorship stuff right. lately, like the Fort Davis movies on the lawn, you guys are sponsoring right. and stuff like that. And so we even outreach outside the county with some of that. We may sponsor, um, you know, the Chinati something. If it's an event that we feel that is bringing really and truly, that's the litmus test, heads and beds, I'm sure you've heard that. If it's bringing people from outside of, of uh, Bridger County, and they're going to spend them at least a night, hopefully two or three nights, then we will advertise in their, in their uh, brochures or we'll advertise at the event. Um, we usually trade off and they, okay, we're going to advertise at your event, but we're going to set up um, our, our, our kiosk and hand out information. So we act as, you know, kind of semi chamber of commerce that way too. But that's the, that's the way we've decided to get involved with the local community because we really do want to support the local communities if they bring visitors from outside of the of, of Brewster County to spend a night. If, uh, if an event that may be one of the ones who's, who wants to, who's also applying for uh, a grant from Alpine, if they want to uh, to uh, make a pitch uh, for sponsorship, what's the what's the approach? Say well, somebody believes they've got an event that's going to benefit Brewster County in this way, and they so they want to say, okay. would you consider sponsoring my event? What what should they yeah, do? Pretty much the what we do, we don't sponsor, we don't pay for the event. Right. We buy advertising. Right. So we will buy advertising. And sometimes that comes in the form of a, a, a level of sponsorship. Gotcha. It's like we sponsor uh, things at the Museum of the Big Bend. Well, with that, we're in all of their advertising. We've got our names up there and everything at, at the event. And so we're, we're buying advertising. So that, that's the pitch. That if, somebody, if somebody wants, if you're putting on an event in Alpine, you, you are curious about the possibility, because obviously there's no guarantee here, of, uh, of enticing the Brewster County Tourism Council to support the event, then it's that recognition and uh, advertising visibility opportunities that they're gonna be interested in. Okay, and with that said, keep one thing in mind. Um, one of the criteria we look at, does it bring people to Brewster County, not Alpine? If it's an Alpine sponsored event, we have to think that that person that's coming to Alpine for that event is going to go down to Big Bend or go over to Marathon. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm saying that is that Alpine does not participate in any of the county tourism tax. So <clears throat> we have to be careful there. And, and certainly we would, we do sponsor things yeah. here in Alpine, but it would be something that's bringing folks in 
uh, like some of the art exhibits at the museum, it brings in people from all over the, the country. And we assume they're not just going to stay in Alpine for a night and leave. That's very true. Yeah. So they're going to they're going to make it a vacation. Okay. So, so that's, not, that's a right. So not only the advertising, but how distributed is your audience, and how much are they likely to move around? Yeah. yeah. I like. We're not going to sponsor. I'll just tell you up front. We're not going to sponsor the Cinco de Mayo in Alpine. Okay. That that wouldn't that wouldn't fit in. But uh, art exhibit, uh, Charles Russell art, art exhibit up at the museum is going to literally bring in people from all over the country. Sure, we'll help out with that. We'll, we'll buy advertising through sponsorship. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, anything else? For any of the three of us here. Very, very timely for you walking yeah. in today. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you're watching on Zoom. Like, oh, I better go. I better go in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So first, an acknowledgement that the challenge between tourists and locals is not unique to Brewster County or the city of Elmine. It happens in every tourist town yes. in the world. Um, that being said, the challenge has always been the same of uh, not having the infrastructure to support your successful uh, results of good uh, marketing and uh, recruiting of tourists. So that being said, is there any dialogue statewide to expand the rules on where the funds can be sent, spent so that some of it, even if it's a tiny bit, could be spent to help the infrastructure in the locales, specifically looking at Trilingua Ghost Town. So it would have to be a use. The answer, the question is, is there a discussion about that? There's always discussion um, in the legislature about expanding the use of hotel equity taxes. Um, the whether or not our industry would consider supporting that expansion <laughs> will very much depend on the specifics of the use of that hotel tax. There's a longstanding prohibition, the tax code, that prohibits hotel tax dollars, in addition to this two-part test, that says hotel tax dollars may not be spent for general infrastructure purposes. Right, that's been long standing for a long period of time. Is that a state law? That's a state law, right? That's a state law. And and the reason behind that is, is you know, we talked about I talked about earlier about the high tax rate, right? And this is the we the idea is this local hotel tax should be should be spent specifically for tourism and marketing and and, and hotel activity, right? That was that's the, the whole purpose of this. Um, so you know we're taxed at a high rate, and so we ask that those those tax dollars be be allocated in that particular way. I will tell you in the last legislative session. 2021, there was an effort amongst various cities, several cities, to use a limited amount of hotel tax revenue for public parks that have a lot of tourism activity. So the city of Fredericksburg was a city that requested this as an example. Market plots, that center, that center, talent, you know, but they had to have all kinds of events there, right? The city said, well, we want to use some hotel tax money for the upkeep of that that's Central Park, right? Because we know tourists and hotel guests are the primary users of that, that Central Square. And uh, as an association and generally as an industry, our board agreed that we would sign on to that legislation, provided that there was a limit to how much hotel tax money was spent, that there was a direct return on investment component to it, and there would be a clawback if the money was, was used anywhere else for any other purpose. Um, so we worked with the City Managers Association on that legislation, but there were a number of folks in the tour, the broader tourism community that were concerned about any expansion of hotel tax revenue for what was typically been a non-hotel tax funded expense, and they killed that legislation. So, you know, there are folks that are in, in my industry, in, in our greater tourism industry, that are very opposed to the idea of further expanding hotel key tech use for some of these other things. But uh, every legislative session, I work on local bills for cities and counties that expands hotel tax usage for their particular community. And we think it's good ROI and we pass those bills. You know, uh, Odessa, two, four years ago, they wanted to use hotel tax money to build sports facilities on land that's owned by UT Permian Basin. So the university owned land, but the hotel community there felt that they get, would get enough ROI from the events that are held on that improved sports facility to make it work. We, we put a lot of guardrails into the law. 
we passed that bill for them, right? So we expanded hotel tax use for that particular community. So that's a very long answer to a very simple question is, you know, it very much depends on what we're talking about and if we can get there in a way that our industry can live with. And even if it's bracketed specifically for this community, we always look at new legislation and from a standard of what if the population brackets were pulled off of that and it applied statewide? Is that something we could live with? Because I guarantee you, if we pass something specific for Brewster County in 2023 and 2025, you know, some other counties could say, well, we're unique too, and we want to do that as well. And you know, that might be fine as long as we did it correctly from our standpoint the first time around. So that's how we look at legislation. That's helpful. Uh, a second question, follow up to that, is um, what is the auditing process to make sure that the funds are used properly? So it's a local tax and collected locally, right? So, for example, the, the Texas Controller's Office plays no role in the collection of hotel occupancy tax at the local level. They collect the state hotel tax, but not the local hotel tax. And that's different, say, from sales tax revenue, right? The controller's office collects all the sales tax revenue and then remits the, the city's portion back to the city, for example. The auditing is all done locally. It's public record, it's public subject to, to, to public information requests. All meetings where hotel tax revenue is decided on how it will be spent are subject to open, open meetings, like this one here, even though we're not deciding anything here today. But, but you know, if we were, it would be subject to open meetings. And so any member of the citizen can ask to go in and take a look at those records and see how those hotel tax dollars are, are being spent. Now, if there's concern that there is some sort of you know, criminal activity occurring, well, that's a separate matter, right? That'd be something that the district attorney's office would want to look at um, you know, and, and, and investigate. So that's that's how it's done. There's not a statewide audit. And in fact, the state doesn't even keep track of what the tax rate is in this county, let alone how the money is being spent. We, we do. How we does do you have a county tourism board? Do you, does Brewster County Tourism Board audit money that's sent out? On how it's spent. Okay, um, how the how the the tax money is spent. Yes. Uh, we are okay. I'll tell you the process. Um, we present a budget to the county commissioners, right. and it's it's very specific of where that money or where where we recommend. We or remember we are only an advisory board. We we make very specific recommendations where that money can be legally and most effective, uh, effectively be spent. <laughs> and then that goes to the county commissioners and they can do whatever they want to. I mean, we have no control over that. Uh, we've been fortunate that the commissioners for the most part um, have gone along with our suggestions. But but it is, uh, and it's, it's quite a process. We have a marketing committee that meets throughout the year and it's it's not a rubber stamp committee, and uh, and it gets it gets pretty wild talking about stuff. But then the, the county's books are audited, as are the cities. Mm -hmm. So they right. have their auditor that then comes back again to the council to the right. commission commissioners court. Uh, so that's where that audit comes in. Now from the city of Alpine, the uh, the controller's office does request a a readout at the end of each year of what categories we spent in. And we have, this is a relatively new thing. And then they're phasing in more questions as yes. time goes on. And we're going to phase so, in more in the next yeah. session. So, uh, <laughs> so the last time uh, we, they ask how many, but then we also get the question back. If we didn't hit our 50% mark on advertising, we get a wow. lineup. Uh, now, and we didn't last year, oddly enough, because of COVID, but not for the reason one might expect. So as we all know, we overperformed during uh during the pandemic yes. and so there was so much more i don't get real-time revenue reports and so i didn't know how much more we were going to bring in until the fiscal year was already over so i, I, did, I did my best last i raced yeah. at the end but we did not meet it but so then our answer like so many others was covid uh <laughs> and next year we'll do our best i think what uh when you're talking about the different taxes for like you said El Paso's is really high and like you know obviously ours is lower I think that um, it's important for people to understand that that's why like Airbnb doesn't collect the local tax like universe that's a universal like whatever like that's why it, it'd be hard for Airbnb to, to just collect everyone's local tax and that's why like 
I don't think it'd be very hard you at all. I, I totally disagree. <laughs> I hear Airbnb make that argument. Yeah. I will tell you that if Hilton International can do it, can figure it out. If Merit can do it, Airbnb, the technology company, they should be able to do it. And in fact, they do do it in those communities that have agreed, signed a voluntary right. collection agreement with them. So like in- So Paris, we don't Paris, have that. Alpine, mm -hmm. that's why we have the registration yeah. process. Right. People have to pay directly yeah. to the city. And so. we've elected to date not yes. to pursue it. Right. You know, there's there are trade-offs. Not to pursue Airbnb doing it. For exactly. Us. Yes. We, so we we are pursuing <coughs> the bill occupancy tax from short-term rentals, but right. not exactly. That's exactly yet. right. Yeah, yes. we have we're not talking to Airbnb. So what's kind of the state of things with those it's, voluntary it's, agreements? It's it's <laughs> it's a hot topic, no pun intended. Um <laughs> So a couple things about this. Okay, so so there are a number of communities that have signed voluntary collection agreements, as I mentioned, with Airbnb. There's pros and cons. The pro is that the city is immediately going to start collecting more money because Airbnb is going to start collecting the tax automatically for the local government. The con is that Airbnb is going to ask for, for forgiveness for all potential past due tax liability. And then two, the Airbnb is not going to provide any information about the location of those particular properties. So there's no meaningful way to audit that. And then also, if you're interested as a city in trying to find out where these things are located, because we'd like to keep track of them, ask them to register with the city for, for an SDR permit, for example, or at least we just like to know that they exist. You're not going to get any information. You're just going to get a check from Airbnb every quarter, right? So that's the con. And, you know, it's, it's frustrating for us in the traditional, and I've had a lot of SDRs membership too, but these for our traditional hotels, it's very frustrating because we don't get treated that same way. Right. What about all of the new companies that are popping so, up that are offering that, the collective for you? So, so that's the next question. Um, what about companies like AirDNA and Lodging Revs and Avenue Insights and those those companies that are that are now in the business of using um, you know, data scraping tools essentially to try and locate those lodging properties and then bill them and, and collect from them. Um, that is more and more communities are turning to those tools in order to make that happen. Cities, but not counties yet, but hang on to that. Cities may use a small amount of their hotel tax revenue to pay for an electronic tax collection system. The amount, the maximum amount is 1% of the annual hotel tax budget or $75,000, whichever is less. So 1% is probably the right number for you all. Yeah. Um, and so that's the amount you could spend annually on an electronic collection system. Now that was not included with the county law when, when city law was changed in 2015. Um, I am working right now with Lano County on a bill that would be a statewide bill and their state rep um, to allow counties to do that same thing, to use the, the exact same dollar figure, exactly the same amount of money as a city can to use an electronic tax collection system because it's such a problem. For, it's a problem for cities. It's really a problem for counties. I don't but tell you those, there's so many. With, with those systems, like wouldn't you get a windfall in the first initial year, but then once they catch everybody up, you're not going to continue to see that huge revenue bump that you get when they when they catch everybody. In the so beginning. they typically don't try to go after a lot of past due taxes okay. revenue because it's just it's it's just too hard, right? It's just too hard to do that. It usually and it's up to the city or the county as to how, how they want to approach it. But usually they look at it prospectively, right? And, and they say, well, we're not going to grant you amnesty necessarily for any past due tax liability. We're not going to say that that's okay. But from now, we're going to focus on future tax collections for, for, or for tax collections for future activity, right? And I'll note, just for anybody who may be listening, that there is a four-year statute of limitations on hotel occupancy taxes but that only applies if a tax return has been filed. Mm. So if someone has never paid the hotel taxes and has never filed a tax report with the city or the county, there is no statute of limitations on that activity. So keep that in mind. Same thing happens with your federal open taxes as well, by the way. So always file a federal open mm -hmm. Do I, we have, sorry, no, no, I'm, I'm talking about Airbnbs, and I don't mean to bash Airbnbs, but I think they're great. Uh, we have well over 200 in, in, the, in the southern part of Brewster County. Maybe as many as 300, we have no. Um, and one of the questions earlier was, or one of the discussions was about infrastructure. Well, everybody that had a monthly rental now has an Airbnb. The biggest problem that we have in the southern part of the county is housing. That's right. There is no housing. So if you can't hire anybody yeah. to work, 
it's hard to either open a new business or to expand your existing business because there's literally nowhere to live right now. So that's a big problem that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. probably by the county, the county to get in some way and try to recruit somebody. Well, but isn't that where you look at your big people like Lajitas and and the Gage? I mean, the Gage owns tons of houses in Marathon. They provide the housing so that they have their employees and obviously they're getting a return on it. So... I mean, is that is that is that the is that the formula more people need to look at in South County? Because if you provide housing, then you have employees. Well, the the other <laughs> part of that, but and for a lot of different reasons, uh, real estate yeah. prices have just gone yeah. unbelievably yeah. out of the way out of the sky. So, um, so it's really hard to to start with new properties. Whereas in Marathon, they were renovating old yeah. properties. And, uh, and you've got a guy with a lot of money doing it, and he had a lot of great vision. And yeah, I mean, I guess it's kind of like up on the observatory, they provide housing too, because exactly. how are you going to go up and down from the right. observatory every day? And, and, and you know, some of the larger operators in the South County do provide that housing wherever they can. But that's right. And it's, this, isn't a, this isn't a Brewster County problem specifically. You know, I was in, in Marvel earlier today, it's a problem there. You know, Fredericksburg, it's a big problem there. Austin, it's a big, they raised my property value 54% this year. 54%. It's a problem. So that's when you rent. <laughs> You're in a condom or get into an apartment. Yeah. Right. And I, I wanted to just add one thing, then I'll sit down. I don't want to come and hear the meeting here, but please ask any questions. And you can call me anytime if you have any questions. Um, we, we have been asked, well, why do you have to charge so much? You know, why do you need all that money? Well, um, we're not charging as much as probably the other communities and all that. Um, this is a tax that doesn't cost the citizens or the residents of Brewster County one penny. I mean, this is my, this is pennies from heaven. It's but people are coming in and they're bringing this money and they're staying in hotels and and they're they're paying that tax. So it's not costing the residents. Uh, unlike school tax, hospital tax, property taxes. So it doesn't cost you anything. So why leave it on the table? That's, that's, that's one thing. Keep in mind, and this is something that people don't realize, along with that, there's a percentage that goes to the state. And I'm a, I don't know how that comes, trickles back or where it goes, but I'm assuming that we get benefit from that in the, in the county in general. But this, and I'm, I'm using old figures, but the, the, the revenue generated in Brewster County from uh, visitation, from, from tourism, is over $86 million a year. Now, add sales tax to that. That comes back into the county or the city to be spent in the general fund. So really and truly, tourism is funding much of the, the, the general day-to-day -day, uh, business of the county and the city. Let me add one more to that. That's the property tax revenue that's generated as well, right? So lodging properties are valued primarily on the income approach. The more money they make as businesses, the higher the property tax valuation. That property tax money goes to the county, so it benefits all the county operations. So see, there's, it's more than just the lodging tax that's being spent to market visitors to come to this area. It's, well, Brewster County has the highest percentage of job-related or tourism uh, job-related um, in the entire state of Texas. So over 30% of the population of Brewster County relies on, on uh, tourism for at least part or all of their uh, livelihood. It's our largest industry. That's what I'm saying. It's our largest industry. <clears throat> far away. But, but, but Bill, when you say that it doesn't cost a penny, you, I mean, you're talking about cash out of pocket. There are other costs associated to the local citizenry, whether it's the guy and his two kids and wife and they're cleaning houses or wherever, and he's a welder and she teaches at the school. But, but it's costing them in, as you said earlier, how visitors come in, they see, they like the place, they buy the property. A lot of California money, a lot of out-of-state money is coming in, and then you have realtors driving. I, I, you know, I get a price of a little mobile home just up the hill from me, and so they want a quarter of a million acres. If they're, you know, the realtor told them, you know, a quarter of a million dollars, yeah. So they got a quarter million dollars for this little mobile home. 
You're right. And, and it turns out that the, that the house didn't even sell them for that, but they, they're driving this price. But that, to me, is the turnaround expense, not a penny. It's costing them pennies because of the tourism is really what's driving this inflation pricing and the, the homes and the real estate. Sure, it's collateral damage. There's collateral damage. <laughs> okay. what it, that is a cost. But that. And I we, think that's where the script where I'm just saying local people like sure. that live in the ghost town, live in Studio View or in Terminal there. But to that be they, fair, they almost nobody banks. was originally who's down there now was originally a local person. I mean, everybody who's down there is that's not true. There, there's some, I but, there, there's, but there's, there's a lot. But there's a bunch more. There's a lot of people that have <clears> but they've come, come in. in. Yeah, it, it's and, not like it just is. And, and I see it all the time. I'm in the construction business, and so I see it. I'm, yeah. I'm building these buildings, but right. these people come in. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is, but, but you, I mean, you get right down to the bottom line the fact that this is a cool place. Sure. I mean, here. I, we have so much yeah. to offer people to live here. I mean, I had a conversation today. Um, we have the best climate, it's the most beautiful scenery, great people. Um, you know, sure, we, we have sacrificed to live here. We're a long ways from AGP. But, um, you know, everybody that lives here is, is willing to do that. So that that's that's part of it. They're going to come anyway because it, it's a neat place. Frederick Bird's a yeah. prime example of that. And, 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 you know, and I, you know, we could debate this all night, but hopefully we're bitter next time, right, about about what, the, what the, the best course of action is. But I would argue, too, that if you compare Brewster County with maybe a neighboring county to the east, along the border that doesn't have this sort of tourism activity and you look at the quality and nothing, not saying anything too negative about those areas, then you compare their quality of life to your quality of life, your quality of life is, is likely going to be substantially better. And I think that's because of that economic activity that's occurred. I'm going to sit down. I'm not getting death threats from the people in that town because I own a hotel there. It's happening in South Brewster County. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um again it change it's happening change is happening it's going to happen and i think it's up to us to, to try to, to direct that change to the benefit not only to me and my family but my community my the county the desert so thanks for coming thanks for speaking to yeah but, but huge this? challenges i mean we're faced with huge challenges uh, like I say, I've been involved with the, the Bruce County Tourism Council. I helped get it established. I, I, I'm, I'm the guy that got the legislation sent to, to get the tax done, or one of the guys. And I promise you, 25 years ago, we never thought that we'd be dealing with this much tax mm -hmm. revenue. And, and, and yes, we've been successful. And I give the council a, a, a lot of kudos for that. But it's not just us. The population of Texas has grown. Um, social media, I mean, think of what social media is doing to promote a lot better than we're doing. I mean, folks are getting on there and posting pictures of Big Ben and Alpine and Marfa and American and everything, saying, wow, this is cool. And so there's a lot of factors here that we, we, we're, we have new challenges, big challenges. Any more questions for me? I'm going to sit down. Thanks so much, Bill. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Bill. And any more questions for me? I did. I have yes. a question. Sure. Um, we are sitting in, we're standing in, we're standing on sitting in the very largest dark sky uh -huh. reserve in the world. Right. And I'm looking at the uh, code, and there's one section in here for a very specifically defined community Blanco, Texas. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And they have some they have they they have this exclusion or whatever you want to call it to use So anyway, Sorry, I want, I'm curious. I'm, I'm happy for Blanco. I think it's, it's uh -huh. wonderful. They have a really active dark sky community over there. How they it says that they're supposed to track something yes. for five years. How does that work? So basically what happens is the city is tasked with 
trying to track uh, people who come and visit the community because of their dark skies and any sort of dark sky promotional events or activities um, compared to the hotel tax revenue generated from that type of activity against the hotel tax dollars spent to create a dark skies uh, community in the first place and also to provide some grants to businesses to they, you know, point their lights downward and whatnot. So it's on to, it's on for the city to, to track that and, and to balance that. Now you may be aware that in 2021 there was a group, the National Parks Conservation Association, um, attempted to pass a bill um, that would have allowed certain communities in this part of Texas to do something very similar. I helped them draw up the bill. It's actually I felt it was a much better drafted bill than Blanco's bill as far as you know what, what they can and cannot use the hotel tax money on. But that looks like. Um, that bill died on the House floor when the Democrats broke quorum over the redistricting fight in the final days of the, leg of the legislature, well, along with a whole lot of other bills. It didn't die. It, it, didn't, it, just, it died for that reason, not because it was, it was opposed otherwise. Uh, I haven't visited with those folks to see if they're going to come back again in the next session to offer a, a similar bill. My guess is that they will not, um, but I, don't, I can't speak for them. I haven't talked to them about it, um, and I, I'm not sure where they are on it. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, and Laura, if you want to reach out to them, I've got contact info for Chloe Kremlin. Yeah, probably have her. Okay. Chloe. Oh, yeah. 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 So that'd be a question for Chloe. Dark Skies doesn't fall on the... No, it, you, could, you could advertise and promote your Dark Skies, right? And I would argue you could even go so far as to get the, the designation with hotel tax money under advertising and promotion. Um, but, uh, but you can't use hotel tax money to actually change infrastructure. Right, and so to you know preserve the dark skies, to make the skies darker. Right, you know you can't. Yeah, Blanco can. Blanco can. Right, yeah. right. Well, one thing we might think about is: uh, Are there events that we could do that serve a fundraising purpose to build a retrofit fund that we can then use hotel taxes to bring people to? Something like that. You know, we can always make that one step away mm -hmm. as long as we're bringing people in. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. I, I literally brought van loads of people from Austin multiple times out to Big Ben to watch, you know, certain astrological events. Right. So, oh, that's great. Yeah. See. Yeah. <laughs> Our dark skies yeah. attract tourists. Yeah. Yeah. Time. yeah. Sure. Now you got to come up to Austin for the eclipse in two years. So. <laughs> what are the questions for me? Yeah, and I want to let you guys know, and anybody on Zoom, and anybody on the recording, that any questions about Alpine's grant program. You can email me, Chris, C H R I S, at visitalpinetx.com. I'll be happy to answer them. We have until July 1st to get the applications to GEO. And uh, when will the funds be distributed? If you're ah, well, okay, you deal with that process. Is right now we have a, uh, a hotel occupancy, in fact, Laura, we have a hotel occupancy tax committee meeting scheduled for July 11th, but I want to canvas everybody and make sure. I know John's going to be out of town. We need an in-person quorum. So July 1st is the deadline. On the 11th, that gives us a 10 days to, uh, to get the packet together and get it all to the committee. They review all the applications, uh, hopefully in one meeting, but sometimes in two. We put together, just like the Tourism Council does, a recommendation for council. That then goes into the council's budget workshops <clears throat> and becomes part of the city budget. Um, and then the council does what they see fit. They usually uh, follow the recommendation very closely. They haven't deviated from it sometime. Yeah, since Chris, Chris gets grilled. <laughs> yeah, on occasion. It doesn't hurt that a council member is on the committee yeah. because he can speak to council for uh, the decision making process. You know, that's a great way to get insight to the other council members mm -hmm. uh, from one of their own. But most of the funds are a reimbursement. Not a distribution, right? Yeah. Okay. And we strongly, yeah, let's say yeah. that to everybody. We strongly prefer for uh, one for the funds not for the a grant not to be the sole source of support for an event. We really want you to uh, want the event to be self sustaining if at all possible. We want you to look for sponsorships elsewhere so that uh, it's a reasonable proportion that's coming from the grant. We really prefer that. And we also really prefer if you spend your money and then ask us to pay you back. We, then we get the, the paper trail, we cut you a check. Right. That, that works best. Uh, but we can 
pay directly in, in some cases, usually for advertising. Well, that's interesting. Yes. Has anybody signed up to run uh, shuttle bus services from Alpine hotels to South County events like the Chile cook off? We, we have a local a, guy now who does. We have uh, he just is a guy that has started his own, like he's doing it in his truck. And when he grows bigger, he's looking at doing like a van service of some okay. kind. But he um, does a lot, even he'll do airports, he'll do Odessa and, and El Paso, does a lot down to like Silo where people yeah. are doing a higher end trip. Um, but he'll do stuff to Fort Davis if people don't want to drive down the mountain at night, you know, he'll take them up to star parties and things like that. Um, but the only, but yeah, to answer your yeah. question about the transportation hot funds, no one's asked yet for them. The only uh, thing we, that gets transportation is what, Viva? Uh, it's actually, Viva hasn't asked for that. Uh, they, they run shuttles, but yeah, they haven't asked shuttles. for our funding. Cowboy Poetry yeah. Gathering, they, uh, they have, I think it was $1,600 last year <laughs> that they did their program. So they rented vans, pay drivers. Uh, yeah. And that was to campus, and, and, and it was a combination. This is one of the things that if the starting and ending, starting and or ending point is at a hotel, they can make other stops along the way. Mm -hmm. So this was something where the route also would go to the parking lots. It would help people get around campus as well as from their hotel to the event because that's a big that it's a it's an older audience for the Cowboy Poetry Gathering, and right. so uh, mobility is not. They asked me suit. to load my yeah. stuff because I was super pregnant. They were like, we would rather give you a ride and have you deliver me. <laughs> <laughs> I just go on like a table up there. So, but yeah, we'd be open to a proposal and, and bring that to the, the committee if, if somebody wanted to do it. So, so, so if they started at a hotel and went someplace, they could technically stop at Amtrak and pick up passengers. Sure. Mm -hmm. away someplace. Yeah, so as long as we're not talking about city bus service, basically. Right. Yeah, right. Not, not for private. locals, but private, 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 private yeah. operation. Yeah. Yeah, and, and everything, of course, is gonna as there's more pressure on the available funds, then there's this strategic question that's on the committee to say, of all these requests, what are the ones that they believe are gonna bring the most return? But they, they try really hard to get to yes for. For everybody, they, they're very supportive of the efforts mm -hmm. that our local people put into mm -hmm. their events. Yep. Great. Well, thanks so yeah. much. Thank you, Justin. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Justin.